Sarah, it's an incredible scene here in downtown Manhattan where all eyes and ears of the world are anxiously waiting because for the first time in history, we're going to hear for ourselves if a honeybee can actually speak. What have we gotten into here, Barry? I don't know, but it's pretty big, isn't it? can't believe how many humans don't have to be at work during the day. Hey, you think these billion-dollar multinational food companies have good lawyers? Folks, everybody needs to stay back behind the barricade. Ooh. What's the matter? I don't know. I just gotta chill. If it isn't the B team. Hmm. Shut up. All rise. The Honorable Judge Bumbleton presiding. All right. Case number 4475, Superior Court of New York, Barry B. Benson versus the honey industry is now in session. Mr. Montgomery, you're representing the five major food companies collectively. A privilege. Uh, Mr. Benson. You're representing all bees of the world? <clears throat> yes, Your Honor, we're ready to proceed. And Mr. Montgomery, your opening statement, please. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, my grandmother was a simple woman. Born on a farm, she believed it was man's divine right to benefit from the bounty of nature God put before us. If we were to live in the topsy-turvy world Mr. Benson imagines, just, just, just think of what it would mean. Maybe I would have to negotiate with the silkworm for the elastic in my britches. Talking bee. How do we know this isn't some sort of holographic motion picture capture Hollywood wizardry? They could be using laser bees, robotics, ventriloquism, cloning. For all we know, he could be on steroids. Oh. Mr. Benson. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, there's no trickery here. I'm just an ordinary bee. And as a bee, honey's pretty important to me. It's important to all bees. We invented it. We make it. And we protect it with our lives. Unfortunately, there are some people in this room who think they can take whatever they want from us because we're the little guys. And what I'm hoping is that after this is all over, you'll see how by taking our honey, you're not only taking away everything we have, but everything we are. Oh, I wish he would dress like that all the time. So nice. Call your first witness. So, Mr. Klaus Vander Hayden of Honey Farms. Pretty big company you have there. I suppose so. And I see you also own Honeybird and Hunron! Yes, they provide beekeepers for our farms. Beekeeper? I find that to be a very disturbing term, I have to say. I don't imagine you employ any bee freers, do you? And uh, no. And not only that, it seems you thought a bear would be an appropriate image for a jar of honey. Well, they're very lovable creatures. Uh, yeah, you mean like this? <laughs> Kill bees! How would you like his big hairy head crashing through your living room, biting into your couch, spitting out your throw pillows? Rawr! Rawr! Okay, that's enough. Take him away. So, Mr. Sting, thank you for being here. Your name intrigues me, I have to say. Where have I heard it before? I, I was with a band called the police. But you've never been a police officer of any kind, have you? Uh, no, I haven't. No, you haven't. And so here we have yet another example of bee culture being casually stolen by a human for nothing more than a prance about stage name. Oh, please. Have you ever been stung, Mr. Sting? Because I'm feeling a little stung, Sting. Or should I say, Mr. Gordon M. Sumner? <laughs> Not his real name, you idiot! Mr. Leota, first may I offer my belated congratulations on your Emmy win for a guest spot on ER in 2005. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> I also see from your resume that you're devilishly handsome, but with a churning inner turmoil that's always ready to blow. I enjoy what I do. 
Is that a crime? Not yet it isn't, but is this what it's come to for you, Mr. Leota? Exploiting tiny, helpless bees so you don't have to rehearse your part and learn your lines, sir? Watch it, Benson. I could blow right now. This isn't a good fella. This is a bad fella. Ah! Oh! Why doesn't someone just step on this little creep and we can all go home? Order. Order in this room. You're thinking it. Order. Order, I say. Stay here. Please sit down. Well, I just think it was awfully nice of that bear to pitch in like that. I'm telling you, I think the jury's on our side. Are we doing everything right, you know, legally? I'm a florist. Right, right. Well, here's to a great team. To a great team! <laughs> <laughs> well, hello. Oh, Ken. Hello. Uh, I didn't think you were coming. No, I was just late. I uh, tried to call, but the battery. I didn't want all this to go to waste, so I called Barry. Luckily, he was free. Yeah. Oh, that was lucky. Well, there's still a little left. I could heat it up. Yeah, heat it up, sure. Whatever. So, I hear you're quite a tennis player. I'm not much for the game myself. I find the ball a little grabby. That's where I usually sit. Right. There. Mm. Ken, Barry was looking at your resume, oh. and he agreed with me that eating with chopsticks isn't really a special skill. You think I don't see what you're doing? Hey, look, I know how hard it is trying to find the right job. We certainly have that in common. Do we? Well, bees have 100% employment, of course, but we do jobs like taking the crud out. That's just what I was thinking about. I'm gonna go drain the old stinger. You know, you know, I've just about had it with your little mind games. What's that? Italian Vogue. Mamma mia, that's a lot of pages. It's a lot of ads. Remember what Van said, why is your life any more valuable than mine? That's funny, I just can't seem to recall that! Ah! So laugh for the really cool guy! Ah! Yeah! Whoa! Well, well, well. A royal flush. You're bluffing. Am I? There's a dick! Woo! That bowl is gnarly! Except for those dirty yellow rings! What are you doing? You know what? I don't even like honey! I don't eat it! We need to talk! He's just a little bee! And he happens to be the nicest bee I've met in a long time! Long time? What are you talking about? Are there other bugs in your life? No, but there are other things bugging me in life, and you're one of them! Fine! Talking bees, no yogurt night, my nerves are fried from riding on this emotional roller coaster! Goodbye, Ken. Oh. Oh. And for your information, I prefer sugar-free artificial sweeteners made by man! I'm sorry about all that. I know it's got an aftertaste! I like it! I always felt there was some kind of barrier between Ken and me. I couldn't overcome it. Oh, well. Are you going to be okay for the trial tomorrow? Oh, I believe Mr. Montgomery is about out of ideas.